three moons for the price of one. If lunar cosmic events are on your bucket list, listen up. NASA says Earth is in for a lunar trifecta of a super blue blood moon on January 31st, 2018. Lunar orbit of Earth follows a 29-day cycle. The blue moon, like the one on January 31st, occurs when there are two full moons in a calendar month. The moon will also be closer to the Earth during this time, meaning that it will be brighter than normal. This is called a supermoon. When the moon passes through the Earth's shadow during the January 31st lunar eclipse, it will appear red. This is also known as a blood moon. Much of South America, Africa, and West Europe will not be able to see the cosmic event, while most of Asia, Australasia, and the Northwestern America will. The rest of the world may be able to see it partially, depending on their location. According to time, the last total lunar eclipse to coincide with a blue moon was in 1982. Ground control to Major Tomo. Anybody up for some lunar cave diving? Scientists this week may have come across something that could lead to the first ever human outpost in space. A large and cavernous lava tube was this week confirmed to exist beneath the surface of the moon. These tubes are volcanic underground passages formed by flowing lava to funnel this substance. Once the flow stops, the tube remains with features similar to a cave. The discovery was made by a team of Japanese and American scientists who used data from the Selene and Grail spacecraft to acoustically map the enormous lava tube. The chasm is around 100 meters wide and 50 kilometers long and located in the Marius Hills region of the celestial body. It could provide shelter to astronauts during moon missions, protecting them from dangerous cosmic radiation. This could potentially allow for the development of a lunar exploration base. And that moon-based Homo sapiens could very well lead to a human colony. The U.S. and Russia are going to build an epic space base. The Deep Space Gateway. That may sound like some sort of science fiction fantasy, but it could soon be science reality. NASA and Russia's space agency Roscosmos has signed an agreement to work on a new space station near the moon. The proximity of the Deep Space Gateway to the Moon would create opportunities for lunar missions and future deep space exploration, such as missions to Mars and beyond. Space agencies from Japan, Europe and Canada are also interested in working on the project that is currently at the conceptual stage of design. Once complete, NASA says it hopes to use the base to extend the presence of humanity in the solar system. Look who's going back to the Moon. The Indian Space Research Organization has announced plans to send a rover to the moon early next year, nearly a decade after its first lunar journey met with mixed success. The spacecraft for India's Chandrayaan-2 moon mission is comprised of an orbiter, a lander and a rover, which will first slingshot around Earth before going into lunar orbit. The lander will attempt a controlled or soft landing near the moon's south pole, while the orbiter travels around the moon. Once on the surface, the lander will take thermal measurements and deploy the six-wheeled rover to explore the lunar terrain. Among the things the mission will pay close attention to are abrasive particles known as lunar dust, which pose a significant challenge to human colonization of the moon. The Chandrayaan-2 will be carried into space by the GSLV Mark II rocket and is scheduled to launch from an island in the Bay of Bengal in March 2018. India will carry out the final testing phase for the spacecraft in the coming weeks. The program's budget for the mission is relatively small, at only $93 million. We're going back to the moon. Aerospace companies United Launch Alliance and Bigelow Aerospace are collaborating to put a space station in orbit around the moon. The Lunar Depot plan is aimed at placing a Bigelow B-330 inflatable habitat in low lunar orbit by the end of 2022. ULA's Vulcan rocket will launch the B-330 into lower Earth orbit, where it will stay for about a year. While there, the habitat will receive supplies and get crew members rotated every few months. Two more Vulcan rockets will then be launched and their upper stages left in orbit. After propellant from one stage is transferred to the other, the fully fueled stage will attach the B-330 and propel it to its final position orbiting the moon. 
The companies claim the habitat can serve both as a platform for lunar business development and a location for NASA to conduct exploration and astronaut training missions. China eyeing never-before-attempted moon landing. Beijing is reportedly planning a mission to the dark side of the moon this calendar year. The first part of China's Chang'e 4 lunar mission this year will see the PRC attempt to station a satellite some 60,000 kilometers over the dark side of the moon. Landing on the far side of the moon is difficult because it is not within view of Earth, so radio communication is impossible. The next part of the mission will see China use the satellite to navigate and land an unmanned spacecraft on the far side of the moon, something never attempted before. Do you think China will succeed?